Welcome back to the channel and today we're looking at the brand new Volsteed Mini Labrador. This is a smaller knife, great for areas with three and under blade laws, good office carry, dress carry for people who are just into smaller knives and especially the ladies out there. With the Mini Labrador coming in at 6.23 inches long, it's a tad shorter than the Volsteed Mini Nightshade and a tad longer than the Volsteed Chipmunk. It's almost identical in length to the Kaiser Mini Sheepdog and the Kaiser Yorkie. However, with this 2.73 inch blade, it's got more cutting edge than both of these knives. And last, it gets dwarfed by the Ontario Rat 2, and it's almost identical to the Civivi Odium. It has a nice classic drop point with a beautiful satin finish on it, nice and consistent. This one has a high tip on it that sits above the center line of the pivot, just meaning that if you're going to be doing drag cuts, you're going to have to pretty much sit up at a 90 degree angle. So it's not going to be as easy to do that. You'd be more likely to use that belly to pull through. Doesn't have any jimping here, and I'm not usually a jimping guy, but I think some jimping out here would have been great for doing pull cuts or that pointer finger cut. And you have a nice bulky, bulky tip there. Sharpening toil is just okay. I did sharpen it up after I finished testing this knife and as you can see it didn't start flaring but I think it will start with the next sharpening. However, you can easily extend that yourself. The stop pin isn't a problem. What's great about this knife is the blade's geometry. First you have nice and thin blade stock at 0 0.10. That's like bug out thin. That paired with a full flat grind that comes down to 13 thousandths behind the edge with a 20 degrees per side sharpening bevel. So I was definitely excited to start testing this one out because I knew it was going to be a good performer. Not to mention all my Volseed knives have come next level sharp out of box. And the first cut through that cardboard, man, it was like a hot knife through butter, put a smile on my face. And I got to say the last three knives I've tested have absolutely blown my mind with how well they performed. This being one of them. I never felt like this knife was letting up at all through all the cardboard. Sometimes I could start to feel edges start to slow down a little bit. This one felt like it did start to finish. And I think that has something to do with them rockwelling this to 60 to 62. I would have to get, I would venture to say if I had to guess, it'd be around 61 ish maybe just by the way it sharpens. And I didn't have to worry about any kind of big oversized sharpening choil getting hung up in the cardboard at all. And even though you have an under three inch blade there, it was still more than enough to get through the size cardboard I was cutting up. Now, if you had a very big box, this one might struggle a little bit, especially with that higher tip causing you maybe to slide out of the cut. But I had no issues at all. It, it was slicing very, very well, very fast. And as soon as I got done with the cardboard, I jumped straight to the wood to test the ergos and see how that edge still wanted to bite into the wood. And right away, that first light passed through the wood. It was making fine curls effortlessly. And I slowly increased my amount of pressure. I was going into the wood. And right away with the harder pressure and those narrow scales, I noticed that I was really having to squeeze this handle really tight. Now, would this be the knife I would want to grab if I had to do that kind of stuff? Absolutely not. If I could choose, I would definitely go with one of my fixed blades with a real thick handle that fills out the hand nice. But if you, if this is the only knife you had on it, you could definitely get the job done. And once I moved on from the wood, I wanted to go straight to the half inch sisal rope because if you want to see if a knife has bite to it, cut some of that. The fibrous sisal rope, it requires some toothiness to that edge to make it nice and clean and easy to get through. And the first cut through that sisal rope, it kind of felt like I was doing the cardboard. It did not require a whole lot of force going down. This deeper belly drop point is going to shine on a flat cutting surface because you can use that belly to either push into the material, do a sawing motion if you want, do a pull cut through it. All of them work great because of that belly and it makes cutting on a flat surface easier than something with a much straighter edge, obviously. The geometry plays a huge role in how well this knife is performing. Once again, that thinner handle and smaller handle scales make it a little bit more difficult to put a lot of pressure into it. This is where I, I was talking about a small row of jimping closer toward that tip would have been great, kind of like the Vox jimping, because whenever I, I do that pointer finger grip, which I tried a few times, it would have been really nice and would have given me a lot of grip and I would have been able to push harder forward without feeling like I'm gonna twist off of the material. Now this one did feel good almost all the way to the end. Even at the end, it still felt really, really nice. We ended up doing 115 cuts with this knife. 
From there, I was feeling so good about the knife. We move on to the last portion of the things I cut. And boy, it did great. The tubing, it didn't struggle through any of it. You know, I have one piece that's very dense and it, it doesn't give much. It blasts through that one. That one usually gives a lot of knives trouble. But once again, that edge geometry, blade geometry really, really shines and that type of stuff. And I showed in the very beginning of that when I'm doing the slicing through the leather, that's where you can see. You can use that tip if you want, but you're going to be sitting at a 90 degree angle when you're pulling it through. And we get all the way to that 10 ounce denim, another great material to test that edge bite. And it's always, always awesome when I make that first cut into the denim and it just, oh, it bites into the denim and just slices it like it's styrofoam. We get through that absolutely no problem whatsoever and we can test that edge after the edge still feels great that's always always awesome to see and now let's test that edge it feels great like i said now is it as sharp as it was in the beginning no but look by that tip i cut 115 cuts of the sisal rope and look at that oh yeah, that's great. And I did all the other stuff. Now we move to the deployment action of this knife. Now this is a flipper only. I would have loved to see it have thumb studs like the full size Labrador. I don't really care about the front flipper, but it would have been really, really cool to see it have some thumb studs. I like to have multiple opening methods. Now that said, this one does rock it out. It is riding on ceramic ball bearings with a ceramic detent ball. So it is nice and smooth. It's not a very drop shut knife. I mean, it goes back, but it's got a very, very light blade. I never expected to be able to fall as good as it does. You got a well-placed flipper tab that's sitting almost on top of that pivot. So you have a lot of leverage. You got good jimping there to grip the finger and I just pull back it's pretty effortless now you probably would want to keep your fingers off that lock bar because that's going to create extra pressure but for me I'm grabbing that pocket clip and I have no issues whatsoever it's all going to depend on your hand size and how you hold the knife now onto the handle area we have flat titanium scales with a bead blasted finish they have enough grip to them that they're not slippery or anything nice chamfer going all the way around no sharp spots where you don't want them to be they have a Torx T8 pivot. Unfortunately, they went with T6 with the body screws, but I've taken apart a lot of Voss seeds and never had any of their screws strip. So I'm not as worried, especially being this is under $100. You have a titanium backspacer with a mill titanium pocket clip. And I'm pretty sure this is the first titanium frame lock we've seen from Voss seed. We had the RS Chaos, but that was a top compression liner lock. This one is a frame lock, as you can see. The clip's not deep carried, but it sits fairly deep in the pocket. I found it went in and out of the pocket nicely, and if you're gonna carry it in the front pocket like that, it, it sits fairly deep, a lot deeper than some deep carry clips. Goes in nicely, there's enough ramp for this thickness. I don't know, let's check it out in this fifth pocket. I think it's gonna bottom out. Yeah, see, as you can see, it bottoms out in the fifth pocket unless you kind of canted it or didn't have the pocket clip on there and put it in there and had it at an angle. If it's like that, the, the lanyard hole is above the seam of the pocket, but if it's in a regular pocket, it's gonna be some, yeah, it's gonna be covered up by the pocket seam. It is tip up right hand carry only, unfortunately for the lefties out there. You do have a hardened lock bar insert in there with a over travel protection. Uh, that's always awesome to see because you, you don't want to overspring your lock bar because it may not spring back. The lock up on my knife sitting about 60%. It hasn't moved a bit. It has great lock bar access because this comes down lower and I can easily get my finger in there. It's nice and comfortable to push over as well. The lock up on mine is solid. I have no movement up or down, left or right. Now I can flex side to side because of how thin it is. But other than that, there's no wiggle in that blade whatsoever. One thing I did notice is that every day that I carried it, I would forget it was even in the pocket because it's only 1.9 ounces. That is ridiculously lightweight. Now for the nitpicks and complaints, just, this is just personal preference. I like a lower drop point, but this one performs so good, I'm not even worried about it. Like I said, I would have liked some, a little small row of jimping about right here for doing that pointer finger grip, but it's not the end of the world. And I would have also liked to see the sharpening choil come up some like go straight up like this or this plunge grind come all the way to the back right here so i wouldn't have to worry about this widen up 
not the biggest deal in the world because it's pretty easy to make that a little bit bigger each time so i'm not that worried about that and i would have loved to see t8 but like i said earlier i've never had any of their screws strip on me so my final thoughts these coming at 69 dollars do i think it's worth that price point absolutely so i started thinking about that price and this is how i was looking at it you have the mini sheepdog here in my carta that goes for 78 dollars. now this is in 154 cm arguably a better steel than 14 c and it is a button lock however i think it's about what and what with the price tag you know 69 78 for this one and if you want this one in aluminum it's going to cost you 96 dollars the yorkie very similar in overall looks the titanium Yorkie is $159. The Rich Light one is $118. Now, this one is an M390, so it, I kind of understand because you also do have a titanium pocket clip there, and Kaiser's been around for a good bit longer. But once again, I think, you know, they're kind of what and what. And then when I first got this knife, I was like, man, I don't know, $69. This Olton's knife has D2 steel and titanium for $23. However, this one doesn't have a lock bar insert it had severe severe lock stick when i first got it it's just got a stainless steel clip this one has a mill tie clip and d2 if it was done right would probably outcut the 14z or it should this one i would have to say it, it's got a, a soft heat treat to it at least mine does because this one outperformed this one by a landslide so could I recommend it? If you like smaller knives or you live in an area where, where three and under is the law, then yes, I could highly, highly recommend the knife. I think it's priced well. I think it performs outstanding and it's got a nice, smooth, snappy action to it. Once again, Vossied hits it out of the park. So I will try to link every knife that was in this video down in the description they probably will be affiliate links so if you want to help support what i do here on the channel it helps with my testing supplies you can use my links if not no big deal all right guys and girls if you have any questions comments concerns please leave those down below i hope everybody's having an absolute absolute amazing day i will see y'all on the next one Bye.